Welcome, everyone. We are so delighted to have you join us for this Christmas Eve service. And what a service it is. We hope that we will be able to inspire you with, with carols and, uh, and uh, children's pageant in a way we've never <laughs> experienced before. <laughs> yes, that's very true. And of course, hearing the Christmas story once again. And so we're really, truly delighted to have you with us. We do have a couple of announcements. Uh, one is just to remind you that the church office is uh, not only closed between Christmas and New Year's, which is a normal Christmas Eve announcement mm -hmm. that we give. However, because we are in a red zone now with uh, COVID-19 um, and the instructions of the health unit, we are, have advised all staff that they are to work at home where ever possible, except, of course, when we're recording worship. So um, there'll be more information coming out in next week's, um, in in the week's uh, uh, weekly update, right. and we'll keep you in touch with other numbers to reach us at and all that jazz. Which you can do from home. Which I can do from exactly home. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know about you. My phone and I have a whole new relationship. <laughs> You barely used a cell phone before I this. I know. Honestly. Who knew that you could actually use the thing? Yeah. <laughs> I only took it when I was out hiking by myself, uh -huh. right? You I know? do that too. I take my phone in case I fall and break a leg or a hip or a Absolutely. <laughs> I might Absolutely. Have to call someone. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's why I only use my cell phone previous to COVID-19. Previous so, to COVID. Yeah, now it never leaves my side. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, what other, we've got a December uh, 27th service coming up. Yes, Sunday, we, uh, we you do get to worship the, some three times in a row, exactly. you know. <laughs> <laughs> some special music uh, involved in that service as well, so tune in, everybody. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually really delighted with the music that's there for that service. And uh, so uh, don't miss don't, out on Sunday, yeah. December the 27th don't as well. Don't let it well. go to the bag, yeah. We, um, we also want to thank you for your lovely comments about the cantata that was so beautifully done on uh, December the 20th. And we appreciate the uh, feedback that we are getting about that. We do. And thank yeah. you. Thank yes, you. Yes. Thank you all for that. Um, we know that Christmas is going to be different. And I'll be talking a little bit about that in my reflection. But... We're really hoping that this service just inspires you to celebrate Christmas. It is very strange not having us absolutely packed here at the church. It's, uh, you know, one of those Sundays where we uh, easily get very high numbers. Um, mm -hmm. But we're hoping that you're still reaching out to family and friends and letting them know and, and letting them join us for worship Christmas Eve. And of course, this is going to be up for a while. So if they miss it, Christmas Christmas Eve, they can always watch it sometime between Christmas and New Year's, like for sure. it will be up forevermore. Right? Uh, yes, <laughs> there you go. The, the nice thing about that is we're never going to age. <laughs> I'm loving I that. I never thought Another of that. Another COVID lining. bonus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As I almost slip off yeah, my chair. Don't do that, <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Anyhow. Christmas Eve and our minister is in hospital because she's fallen off her stool. Stool. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, who knew that this uh, skirt was so slippery, you know? There we go. Now, that certainly wasn't in the notes. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about the music. About the music. Well, first, um, stressing again that the kids will be in the service, right? Absolutely. Not in the building, you know, as we used to do. Um, people who would come to St. Paul's will know the kids come in the door on Christmas Eve, and I guess Sheila Thompson and Lynn Angus and oh. whomever else grab them and throw a costume on. And here, you're an angel and you're a shepherd. And that's and we had this wonderful children's pageant yes. every Christmas Eve, and so children love to be a part of it. It was exactly. just yeah, and so yeah, so they are still a part. They're of still it. a part it's of it. Uh, and as I mentioned sure. last week, we do have our St. Paul's miracle. Look for the dogs that are turned into <laughs> sheep. And and we really Sorry. want to say a special thank you to Rebecca. My Amadai. goodness, yes. Yeah. So I, I 
I can vouch for the time spent <laughs> on her exactly. videos. They are fabulous. and uh, They really are. So I spent some time trying to figure out a way to bring the children in. And then once Rebecca caught sight of the vision, mm -hmm. uh, she volunteered mm -hmm. to, to do this. And our children have actually, some of the recordings happened, um, as you will note, <laughs> Uh, in October or end of September, yes, that's exactly. how far advanced exactly. we do some of our worship planning, <laughs> um, because they're not going to be, um, particularly these one angels are dancing on a beach, <laughs> and uh, they might not be so beachy, t you know, today. <laughs> So. Oh, it's too cute. And you and I were talking earlier about Rebecca's voice, and she tells the, the story, and it's just so lovely. It's yeah, so, so we hope that you will enjoy that, along with hearing the story from the Bible itself with our wonderful uh, two uh, scripture readers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so stay tuned. Indeed. Uh, music Yes, now. music. Uh, so, um, O Come All Ye Faithful. We can't have a Christmas Eve without Absolutely. O Come All Ye Faithful. So Absolutely. a rather spectacular video. Um, as I always say, sing with gusto. Uh, Discovery Kids, verse 5 of uh, a candle is yes, burning. Yes, because the Christ candle will be lit right. momentarily Indeed. in our service. Um, and then a few little bits of music as we do a verse of this and a few verses of that. So uh, Marley's Dupuy, um, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Uh, we have Sharon Foster doing While Shepherds Watched Their Flocks by Night. Uh, Heather Tilson, Donna Earl um, together doing Silent Night. Um, and Sheila Payne is doing Joy to the World. Fabulous. My postlude is uh, a play on Silent Night. And we're bringing in one of the choir pieces from St. Paul's and Friends Choir. We are. From and the cantata. And we're bringing in one of the youth pieces from, sh from uh, Sheep in Heavenly s Peace. Mm -hmm. So there's a real mix. Mm -hmm. We wanted nice it variety. to be very Christmassy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, we hope you enjoy the service today. And... Uh, and may this Christmas you just find yourself opening up to the presence of the Holy Spirit as together we celebrate the good news that Jesus Christ is born. So sing with us. If you know the carol, join in. Oh, come, all ye faithful.
A Christmas Eve Opening Prayer. Holy One, on this Christmas Eve, we come with expectant hearts into the stillness of the night to glimpse the baby Jesus. As we enter the stable, may we warm to the love and joy we find there. May we be as dismayed as the shepherds, hearing good news from the angels. May we be humbled as wise ones who sense the presence of the divine before them. May we, this Christmas Eve, once again find you not only in a stable, but in our hearts. May we kneel before you, knowing that you will change our lives and our world. Amen. I want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the Wendat Huron First Nations people and that we work to be in right relationship with Boisley First Nations. May we together work for peace and justice for all in our world. Lighting the Christ Candle. Tonight we light the Advent candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, as well as the Christ Candle. Jesus is hope in the midst of darkness. He calls us to work for peace in our world. He is a source of joy in our lives. Jesus reminds us God loves us and calls us to love ourselves and others. This Christmas Eve, we light the Christ candle for Jesus is born and we open our hearts and lives to him. from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 5 and 7b. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, telling of Mary and Joseph's arrival in Bethlehem. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, they found that there was no room at the inn, and they were housed in a stable. This is the story of how baby Jesus ended up being born inside of a stable. Did you ever wonder how Mary and Joseph and Jesus ended up in that stable surrounded by all those animals? Doesn't seem like a place that a mom would love to give birth in. But Mary did. And here's the story of how that ended up happening.
During the time of Jesus' birth, Mary and Joseph had to make a long journey by donkey to get from their town, Jerusalem, to Bethlehem to do some important government work. They had to travel a long way, and poor Mary was so pregnant. Can you imagine how uncomfortable a long journey would feel for a mom if she had a great big baby in her belly ready to be born any moment? Well, they had to find a place where Jesus could be born, because that baby was coming. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, why not just give birth in a hospital? Well, back in those days, they didn't have hospitals for moms to give birth in. So what would be the next best place where they could give birth? They began thinking about staying in a hotel. We call it an inn in this story. So Mary and Joseph began knocking on the doors of all of the inns in town to see if they could find one that had space for them. Maybe we can stay here for the night, they thought, as they knocked on the first inn door that they came across. Will Mary and Joseph find a place to stay here tonight? No room at the inn. Aw, poor Mary and Joseph. They had to get back on the road and see if they could find another inn to stay in. So they knocked on another door. Maybe we can stay here for the night. I wonder, will Mary and Joseph find a place to stay here? No room at the inn here either. Mary and Joseph were beginning to feel discouraged. The town was so busy because of all of the people visiting for the government business. They found one more inn and they knocked on the door. Maybe we can stay here tonight. What do you think? Will Mary and Joseph find a place to stay here? They're running out of options. No room at the inn here either. So, back on the road they went feeling very sad and awfully worried that their baby was going to be born without even a place to lay. Just when they were beginning to feel like nothing was going to work out for them, they came over a hill. And there, nestled in the green grass, was a stable. Maybe this was the last chance. They would give it a try. And so it was. And this is how Jesus ended up being born in a stable. Luke chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, a reading about the birth of Jesus. While Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And it was there, 
in the dim light of that humble stable that Jesus was born. And that little baby brought a great light into the world, a light of hope, peace, joy, and love. Welcome, Emmanuel. The world has been waiting for you. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the the cattle are lonely, the poor baby wakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky, and stay by my cradle till Chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, where shepherds are told astonishing news from angels. In that region, there are shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there is with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors.
calling all angels. We have good news to share with the world. Baby Jesus was born. This was good news. The angels had to tell the world, and they were going to start by telling the shepherds. While the shepherds had no idea what was coming to them, they were probably just having a snack in the field. Now, as you can imagine, shepherds were probably used to watching out for danger that's after their sheep, like wolves or wild dogs. But you can imagine how frightened they would be when they see angels in the sky. That wasn't something they were used to seeing every day. And the angels' words to them told them of baby Jesus and his amazing birth. And they told the shepherds how they could find him in a very crowded town called Bethlehem. Did you hear that? Did you see that? It's coming from the sky. It's all around us. Oh, Wolfgang, I'm frightened. Don't be scared, Gabby. I feel something wonderful is about to happen. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. Today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Well, by the sheep we watched at night, a silent night, glad tidings brought an angel bright, for it's shining out of nowhere. Skies were glowing, exploding, the voices of angels growing. Today in the city of David, the Savior is born. How great our joy! Peace has come for us in Christ our Lord. How great our joy! Joy, 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 our Savior is born. How great our joy! Joy, 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 in Christ our life. How great our joy! There shall be born, so he did say, born to save in Bethlehem. A child today of all days out of nowhere, the words were don't be so clear. The song of the angels was so near today in the city of David. The Savior is born. How great our joy! Peace has come for us in Christ our Lord. How great our joy! Joy, 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 joy! Our Savior is born. How great our joy, 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 in Christ our life. How great our joy. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Joy, 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 our Savior is born. How great our joy! 
A reading from Luke, chapter 2, verses 15 to 20. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, where the shepherds go to Bethlehem to find the child. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, as it had been told to them. And the angels left the shepherds and went back up into the sky. And the shepherds turned to one another and said, We have to go to Bethlehem now and see this baby Jesus who the angels told us about. And at once they began their journey. And just when they thought they couldn't travel any further, they came up over a hill and saw a stable nestled in the green grass. And they knew they had reached their destination when they found the baby lying in a feeding trough surrounded by all the animals. And the shepherds were so amazed by what they had seen that they just had to go and tell more people about the wonderful baby Jesus.
A reading from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, where wise ones in the East quest for God's presence in the world. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi, wise ones from the East, came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi, wise ones, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that, that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the story of the wise ones who traveled from far away to go and visit Jesus after he was born. The wise ones were wise because they had lots of knowledge about the stars and the skies. And kings and queens would trust them to know lots of important information about the world. By this time, Stories had reached the wise ones about the birth of baby Jesus. They knew there was something so special about this baby that they had to go and visit him and bring him gifts and celebrate his birth. just like the angels and shepherds had done before them. The wise ones began their long voyage to Bethlehem. And as you might know, it's very common to bring a gift when a baby is born. The wise ones did not come empty-handed. They brought the finest, richest gifts from their homeland. These gifts would have been given to royalty, kings and queens when they were born. Do you remember which gifts the wise ones brought to Jesus? They brought gold because gold is very precious. Frankincense, because it is a rich perfume. And myrrh, because it's a special oil. And this is the traveling song we sing for them. And you can sing along too with the words. journey 
the wise ones arrived at the stable and shared their gifts and their celebration with the new family. Jesus' birth was such an important time that so many gathered to celebrate him. The angels, the shepherds, the wise ones, even the animals were there. Jesus brought a new message to the world one of peace, joy, and hope. This was a time worth celebrating. In fact, Jesus' birth was so important that we still celebrate it today. Once again, we have heard the Christmas story. We have been delighted to find a newborn baby, to find people who were innkeepers, to meet angels and shepherds and wise ones. For us to celebrate Christmas Eve is to celebrate not only the Christmas story, but to truly take time to open ourselves to the birth of Jesus in our own lives and in our world. To open ourselves to the sense of what Christmas is all about is about how we take this birth and the meanings and the message of Jesus Christ and let it transform us so that it's not only a new birth for Christ, but for us and for our world. And so as the Christmas story touches us this night, may we go always knowing that the birth of the one in our lives is also the one who will change our world. I know that Christmas is going to be harder this year with these COVID conditions and you're not going to gather tomorrow around a table with all sorts of family and friends. It's going to be smaller. But that's okay. Because Christmas is what we make of it. And when we truly celebrate the birth of Christ, we are able to acknowledge to ourselves once again that this is good news, and it's good news that changed our world. And so, may you know this night, the very gift of Jesus Christ to you, to me, and to all the world.
I invite you to pray with me. Let us pray. On this sacred evening, O God, this night of all nights, we thank you that we could once again come together, albeit virtually, to join our hearts in celebration of your birth. In the quietness of the silent night, and also with the exclamations of angels and shepherds shouting joy to the world, may we too open ourselves to celebrate and be grateful for your birth. We pray tonight especially for people all around the world who are struggling with COVID-19, for those who have contact, contracted this disease, for those who have to be on the front lines, for all of those who are even working this night in order that we can have safe places and safe lives, we give you thanks. For those for whom Christmas is particularly difficult, we ask that you will be with them and help us to reach out. And Holy One, on this night, as we celebrate globally, help us to indeed care for one another, to love one another as you call us to love you. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. joy to the world for our Lord has come may we leave this place just truly truly open to the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives and in our world may we know that as we leave this place we have joy so go forth in God's name
from St. Paul's United Church to all of you, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas! Christmas. Yay! And a Happy New Year! Year. I'm smiling, but I have a mask. I know. <laughs> Me too.